Hi guys, I'm Tyler and welcome to the channel. Today we are gonna take your normal attic and turn it into a beautiful functional playroom for the kids. So this is the structure before we got started. We got the stairs right over there that are leading up into a 20 by 30 foot room. And we're gonna divide that roughly in half so that we have about a 13, 14 foot by 20 foot playroom. We are going to build two by four walls we're going to have doors so that we can walk through to a storage room right over there. We're going to super insulate it with the rock wall that you see behind me right there. We already have insulation in the floor, which is the ceiling of the garage. So this should be a nice, cozy room when we're all done. You guys know a couple things about my family. One of those is we live in Michigan, and the other is we recently moved to a new home. I guess not really recently. It's been two years already. But when we left our old house, we left a basement and we moved into this house knowing that we wanted to add on and that has been done at this point. So today we are going to be building the equivalent of the basement in the attic space. Being in Michigan, this space has to be very well insulated, so I started by adding a bunch of rafter vents through the rafters to allow proper ventilation over the insulation. I am going to be using Rockwell comfort bats for all of the insulation and I will be using R30 in the ceiling. Our situation was a little bit unusual where we needed 19 inch centers for the attic space to get the room size that we wanted above the garage. So I had to cut all of those 24 inch bats down to 19 inches and I made a quick little jig that allowed me to stand on it and compress the bat down so that I could cut it with a 6 inch buck knife that I've had laying around pretty much just for this job apparently. After the ceiling was insulated, I moved down to the walls and cut out a section of the sheetrock which we had temporarily put up to allow me to properly attach the walls. Daddy, why are you cutting a hole in the wall? Now attach the boards to the wall. I added a few, I suppose you would call them purlins, up the sidewall and up through the overhead rafters and this will allow me to attach the top plate of the wall permanently to the trusses and obviously the side of the walls to where my hand was as well. I'm using a nail gun to quickly add these into place and then the top plate in the same manner. I then laid out the sole plate of the wall and measured for 16 inch centers all along the bottom starting from where I experimented with a little bit of wall over on the left hand side. I do need to take into account a door that's going to be in the middle there which will allow us to go into the new storage room. I then brought all of the 2x4s up into the attic and used my rigid cordless miter saw to cut everything down to its proper length. Several of you have made fun of me in the past for thinking that an impact driver was fast enough for building walls. Boy, was I wrong. I got this cheap nail gun just for this project so that I could use one hand to hold everything in place. And holy smokes, is it faster to put everything together with a framing nailer. And like I mentioned at the beginning, you can do it with one hand, which is actually a pretty big deal. As you can obviously tell, I built this section of wall on the floor and then finagled it into place. And it looks great here on video, but I actually had to lift this thing up and down three times and I was kind of regretting using the nail gun and wished that I was back to my impact driver. But in the end, I got it to fit perfectly and all is well. But I learned my lesson in the next wall on the other side, I'm going to make my calculations and take my measurements, but I am going to put up the top plate and the sole plate and then I am going to nail the studs into place versus building the wall on the ground and putting it up. And you can see us starting the process right here. First step was to remove a half wall that was in place just so that we could pass inspection. Then the same process of nailing the top plate into place, having some fun with my nail gun, and then taking the measurements for all of the studs. You just saw me measure out right there for all of our stud locations on the bottom board and that's all well and good because that bad boy is flat. But to get the measurements on the top board, 
it's a little more tricky because there is an angle involved. So we are going to do a little bit of trigonometry because we know that this is a 612 roof and we also know that our stud spacing is 16 inches. So using the cosine function, we can come up with 17 and 7 eighths inches of horizontal spacing between all of our studs right here. We can also use the tangent function right here where we can calculate the length of our stud, but in this situation I'm actually going to be measuring the physical space. Once I had all of my placement marks done, it was back over to the miter saw to cut everything down to its final length. This video has been brought to us by Carolina Boots, whose work boots I've been wearing for quite some time now, and they are hands down the best work boots I've ever had, and I've gone through quite a few pairs. We were actually down in southern Missouri visiting my wife's family, and I noticed that my father-in-law had a pair of Carolina boots, and it made me so happy. I asked his opinion. He's been a blue-collar worker his entire life doing concrete and carpentry work, and he said they're his favorite work boots he's ever had, especially because the store he purchased them had the double wide in stock. He was able to get his boots and head home. Follow the link down in the description below. Until June 30th, you guys can use the code DIYTYLERADDICT to get 10% off your very own pair of work boots. And this is why I opted to quickly build those knee walls instead of trying to cut down and pinch all of the comfort bats into place. These comfort bats are made for 16 inch centers, so they slid right into place, no staples necessary. If you do have to cut around an electrical outlet, quick work with a knife and it will slide right into place. And now it is on to everybody's favorite task, sheetrock. To get started I'd use some tight bond construction adhesive and then laid our half inch sheetrock into place and use my colleted cordless rigid screwdriver to get everything tacked into place real quick. Now you're probably going to give me a hard time as to why I started with the walls instead of starting with the ceiling and allowing the sheets on the walls to hold the ceiling edge up and the reason is it is simply the way it was brought up into the attic. If you want to come over and move all of these sheets out of the way so I can get to the 5 8 first, be my guess. But I was sick of moving sheetrock around and this is just the way we got the project done. The ceiling is 5 8 and man oh man if you don't have one of these colleted screwdrivers you would have to really get your noggin involved to hold these sheets up while trying to get some drywall screws started. This thing makes quick work and makes a terrible job not so bad after all. Alrighty, as you can see behind me here, we have got all of the sheetrock done. We got five eighths on the ceiling and half inch on the walls, and it is significantly more echoey in here, but that is kind of to be expected. Now I'm going to do something very un-DIY Tyler. I know you can let me know about it in the comments down below, but I'm actually going to hire out the mudding of this room. Professional sheetrockers are so much faster and so much better at doing that than I am, and I am up against a time crunch for some other projects that I need to get done, so I'm going to spend several hundred dollars and get all of the mudding done. So we're gonna jump ahead right now, get that sheetrocking done, and then we will shoot some primer, and we're actually gonna use chalkboard, not chalk paint, chalkboard paint, on some of the lower portions of the wall so the kids can actually use chalk on the walls and we can erase it and be good to go. So let's jump ahead right now and get all of that sheetrock work done. Bam, just like that, sheetrock work is done and boy was it totally worth the money. Now we're gonna be adding a couple doors so that we can close the doors and allow us to spray without getting paint absolutely everywhere. Quick process of putting the doors in, lay it in place, use some shims and a big old level to get everything nice and square and plumb and level, screw it into place, move on to the next part. Once the door is in place, it is quick work with the multi-tool to trim off all of the extra shims. Since there's nothing in this room, all I had to do to prep for paint was to add some frog tape over the outlets and disconnect all of the lights so that they were hanging down from their wires away from the ceiling. I will be spraying the primer and the ceiling with my Graco airless sprayer, and like I mentioned, every time 
always spray. It saves you so much time in the long run, so much easier, and I really do think you get a better finish, even with airless systems and latex paint like I will be using here. For the primer all along the ceiling and the walls, I simply sprayed it. I didn't go and back roll. For the ceiling, I applied a heavy coat of paint and then went through and rolled to make sure I had an even finish all along the ceiling. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, we are going to be using chalk board paint to apply finish on one of the walls so the kids can use it as a giant chalkboard. Knowing that it actually works, this stuff is pretty cool. It does go on kinda blue, but don't be worried, it is going to suck all of the light out of your room and be a nice dead black. And then onto boring rolling for all of the rest of the walls. I chose to roll instead of spray so that I didn't have to do any masking. We're getting close now folks, on to the finishing touches. We will be adding a fan in the middle of the room to make sure we have proper circulation and so the kids don't overheat. I always like to have light kits on the fans, nothing wrong with extra light bulbs. So question for y'all, leave a comment down below. If it's a lever doorknob, is it still a doorknob? Because it's not really a knob. But anyway, I put some lever doorknobs on and added a lock, a bolt lock up top so that we could keep the kids out of the storage room. Just like we had at the old house, we are going to be using these exercise mats to protect those precious little noggins. These are actually the same exercise mats that we had at the old house, which was a concrete basement, obviously. But now in this attic basement, as we're going to call it, some of them I did have to cut down to make sure we had continuous coverage. A little bit of trim to add those final touches, and of course a lot of bit of caulk to make any trim job look good, and we are done with this playroom. Oh, it squeaks like a real... that's horrible. It's perfect. What do you think, Sam? <laughs> you know me. Come on. Yeah, yeah go ahead and give it a try. What's your name, Ethan? Well guys, that is a wrap, and as you can see behind me, highly successful playroom. It is quite a bit more echoey than I would have liked up here. I might try to do some sound dampening things up here to try to resolve that, but like the wife said, we are not going to be up here. It's going to be the kids, so they can make all the noise that they want. Hope you guys enjoyed this build and you got something out of it. If you did, please hammer that thumbs up button. Helps us out a ton and gets this video in front of more eyes. I'm DIY Tyler. You guys have a good one.